there we are. Hello, hello. It's me again. I know you will probably get tired of me at the end of the day. <laughs> Not you, Steve, but everyone who's watching. <laughs> No, not you. Everyone who's watching. Oh, that's <laughs> very nice. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Um, uh, people is connecting. You'll see uh, maybe people commenting on the chat. We're going live on YouTube and and Facebook and on my on my social media as a, as a Angie Alvarez too, and it's. A pleasure to interact and to connect at least via StreamYard in this case with Steve Brownie. Um, he, I don't know, I, I don't have to get the chance to meet him in person to know who he really is. Mm -hmm. And that's good. I mean, and that's very nice because Dr. Lutza, who was just before you, she said to be our own and thick, authentic self and not just a poker face. And that's who you are. So this is an example of what we had. Um, listen and and learn from 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 dr lutza so here we have steve brownie thank you so much for coming um it froze angie Okay, can you, I know it's my internet, I guess. Can it's, you see uh, me now? I, I'm good. I'm Steve? good. Yeah. Hello. Okay, there you are. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's fine. All right. All right. So thank you for, for giving us your time. It's a gift for us too. So it's gonna be, as I said, a way for us to inspire, to learn and to empower ourselves in a very dynamic and Okay, my internet is not working. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna see what else I can come up with. Um, go ahead, please, and introduce yourself to everyone who really is Steve Brownie, please. Uh, hi, I'm Steve Brown. Uh, I'm the chief people officer for La Rosa's. We're a pizzeria in uh, Ohio, the state of Ohio. Uh, we've been around for 67 years. And uh, I get to do HR in a much different way than most. So uh, it's not, I don't follow tradition. It's something much more people oriented, more people focused. Uh, as you can see from my office, and this is my office, my normal office, I'm surrounded by a lot of stimulus and uh, <laughs> yes. things uh, because it just keeps me mindful of what uh, working with people can be like. Yes, and actually, you have a, a poster of your last uh, book, right? HR yeah, in I writing. do. Uh, well, in, <laughs> when I wrote my first book, and that sounds so awful, when I wrote my first book, uh, the, the company did a nice party for me, and uh, I was the first one who had been an author who ever worked for the company. And the second one came out during COVID, so we couldn't meet together. So they had all of the team members sign a copy of my cover. And wish me good uh, wishes, ah. and I got it from them, and so I put it in my office. This is very nice. Oh, I see. That yes, that's why I see kind of like um, signatures or maybe yeah. comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, I, I don't know why you said brownie, but uh, maybe I'm that's okay or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You 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 said about something about pizzeria that you work for a pizza company, a humongous pizza company. So obviously, you know, I kind of get everything mixed as we get them the time also the time zone mixed up too. So um thank you uh for, for being here with us. And I wanna jump into like basically ask you um a question regarding your first book. And I don't know mm -hmm. if you have noticed the people who are, who are watching us right now or who will be watching the video. Steve has two books and we're going to be talking about the first one because the, the first one is regarding HR on purpose. And it's very important to um, reflect and analyze and um, 
remember why we decided, because we decided and we'll continue here uh, to, to be in HR. So tell me first what motivated you to write that first book and have it named like that, HR on Purpose. Great question. What motivated me was I've been very fortunate and I've been speaking all over the states primarily for several years. And when people heard me speak, they go, but, you know, I'd really like to hear your ideas. And have you ever thought about writing them down? So uh, <laughs> I, I've had a blog for years, but I thought I'll try it. So I just went to my local restaurant here, uh, not La Rosa's, but I went to a local, uh, it's a bar, honestly, uh, and sat down and said, if I can do one chapter, if I can just write a chapter that has nothing to do that I've ever written before, I'm going to give it a shot. And I really felt moved to write it and call it the name for two reasons. One, this is the only profession I've ever been in. So ever since I graduated from college, I've been in HR. I didn't fall into HR. It wasn't an accident. I chose to be in here. And I've been in every facet, different companies, different sizes, different industries, different uh, types of departments. And uh, I love the field. I'm crazy about it. Most people don't say that. They, they apologize for it. And I was tired of people apologizing for being in HR. So I thought someone needs to say, hey, what we do has value. Hey, what we do matters. Hey, what we do impacts companies. And uh, this was before the last 18 months that we've gone through. So I, I wrote this back in 2017. But writing a book is not easy. Uh, it took me a year and a half to write it. And uh, I just wanted to make sure it spoke to our peers. I didn't want it to be some talking head or some theory thing. I wanted real world stuff to be available for people and to understand that if we do things intentionally, if we have purpose in what we do, we're so much more impactful in our organizations than if we just kind of go along and do the job and follow the systems. We should push forward and be very, very upfront about all of our efforts, I've found that from experience. So uh, it's more not a biography at all, but this is the type of HR I've practiced my career. And mm -hmm. uh, it's been very successful to be more purposeful than just hoping it happens well. Very good and very nice. And actually, uh, when you find, and now that everyone is talking about purpose and belonging, you know, it's hard to find your own purpose in life. It's hard to find your own purpose as a career. So, but no one is forcing us to be where we are right now. I mean, we have the chance to pick different, I mean, to choose different paths. But if we're here, it's because we need, there's a, I don't know, something magical is about to happen. Um, and I like it because whenever, whoever is here, uh, will we get the chance, we'll get the chance to, to read it, it's like he's talking to us. I mean, totally. It's not, um, it's very, so I, I get, I mean, I laughed and it's very nice. It's very, it's very you, as I said. Um, and it's very important to find your purpose. I mean, now that you, you had mentioned that you had um, uh, finished your college degree and then you, now, years later, you are the chief people officer of La Rosa's. That's how I will pronounce it. La I like Rosas. it. I like it. That's good. La Rosas. <laughs> so um, how, I mean, sometimes I will say something that maybe I hope I don't hurt any any anyone's feelings, but um, in South America or in any other countries in like Central and down mm -hmm. America, uh, they, it's like we must need a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, And that it's very important. I mean, I'm currently a director of a um, HR master degree mm -hmm. at a very good uh, post-grade uh, business school. Mm -hmm. But at, there's, I mean, it, everything is good about it, but you have to be able to move. I mean, the purpose moves people. I mean, it, like, it, that you don't need to learn it. I mean, you don't need to go to school to learn that. So. Right. Purpose is a big word and impacts like, I don't know, from the stomach and it goes up to, to, to I don't know, I'm just like moving people, you know? So how do you project that with your team? How oh. do you empower them? How can, Please give us a recipe, the <clears throat> recipe for that. <laughs> I think there's a couple things to do. One, value people for who they are. 
And by that, I mean, uh, I have people that are 16 year olds, that it's their first job and they don't even know what's going on. And they're, just, mm. you know, not aware of what work is about. And we jump on to, you know, get you the job, get to work. And I said, no, no, no. Why did you come to La Rosa's? Boy, it's good to see you today. I'm so glad you came in. We're going to kill it. We're going to have such a great time making pizza. Can you imagine? And so I'll go and I'll play silly and say, I don't know how to make a pizza. Uh, one of my favorite ones is this. Uh, our dough is frozen mm -hmm. and uh, we put all the toppings on. But when I walked into one of the restaurants, and when I, I saw a manager being very, uh, a manager, a trainer being very strict with the new hire. So the, the, he was like, just do the job. Just do what I say. Just follow the instructions. I said, you know what? I see what the problem is. The dough's upside down. And the 16-year-old kid goes, what? I said, look at it. It's upside down. I mean, I know I'm not a pizzeria person. I'm an HR person. But take it and flip it over. <laughs> and, and the trainer lost it. He thought this was the funniest thing. He goes, now, look, he's from the office. He doesn't know he's talking. We had it right. Let's flip it back over. And we did this like four or five times. And then finally, the kid caught on. And it saw the joke. And we said, see, we can enjoy what we do. So I think from a purpose standpoint, you need to get to people and say, I value who you are. I value what you do. And I value that you're a part of us, not a program. A lot of companies do this for, for, through programs. Let's have a uh, such and such initiative or such and such you know, in, 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 uh, incentive. My thing is the best thing you can give people is your time. So if I can give my time to the 16-year-old and have fun with them and flip dough, that person, by the way, is still here, and they become an assistant <laughs> manager. And every wow. time, some and every time someone's new, they flip the dough. So it's just teaching people to enjoy what they do instead of expecting them just to come to work. Enjoying and not be afraid because if maybe they make mistakes, don't sure. point fingers at no. Okay, that's that's a very nice. Um, anecdote or a, a real life experience but the thing is that sometimes when you don't have the chance to go you know physically and visit it's challenging but not impossible right right well it's interesting you're in peru and i'm in ohio yes. so we have a chance mm -hmm. to take the time together i i, I don't look yes. at the barriers of space i look at the time i have with somebody so uh, it's funny, somebody talks about, I have Zoom fatigue and I'm so worn out. And I said, that's because your Zoom meetings are boring. My Zoom meetings are not fun, <laughs> boring. I mean, we have fun. We engage. We get into it. it. We're genuine. I love what you said about the doctor who was on before. We have to quit being people that have work faces. Poker face. Here's, yeah. Here's, here's, <laughs> now, uh, hi, I'm the chief people officer of La Rosa's and blah, blah, blah. Who wants that? I mean, you know, it's it's not what people expect. You don't connect. No, no. And, it, and if you miss a connection, people remember it. I think that's very key to understand. If you think it's more important to focus on the work and not the person, that person will remember that. So the next time you interact with them, whether it's virtually or in person, they're going to say, Steve doesn't really care about me. Angie doesn't really care about me. They just want to get to the point. I think you can do both. And we've missed it in HR. We, we jump to the thing and the task instead of taking care of the person and moving to the task at hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and sometimes uh, we, can, we may have different excuses, uh, but it's just about making the right time and when we have the willing to do it, right? Right. Um, the will to do it. The will to do it, right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know why my connection today, today, Today is like pathetic. It's Anyways, great. Um, I have a, <laughs> okay. Uh, you were saying that one of your chapters at the book is like, stop apologizing, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you mean with that? What are you trying to say <laughs> to us? Well, we're the, we're the only profession, Angie, in the world that says when somebody says, hi, I'm in HR, we go, oh, I'm sorry. That That's hard. And it is hard. But you know what? And we go, yeah, I'm sorry. And, and we spend so much time selling ourselves short instead of say, I get to work with every person in the organization. HR is the only department, whether it's a department of one or a multi, uh, you know, departmental global staff of a thousand, you get to work with every person. 
what a cool thing that is. So it's more owning who we are and what we do with positivity and uh, can, being constructive instead of just going, yeah, I'm sorry I'm doing this. I'm, I'm sorry I'm keeping you safe. That's dumb. I'm sorry that I'm paying you and doing your benefits and training you and developing you. That's just a waste of time. It, no other profession does this, not one. We have to be business people first who own what we do and bring value to what we do every day, regardless of our role. When we do that, then we're on the same playing field as every other profession. And honestly, there's a lot of research out there that senior level people want this from HR. They've been asking for it. And now now they're seeing it. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess COVID put us up there, you know, yes. like now, oh, you do exist. Oh, now you do actually <laughs> help us. Yeah. yeah, I've been here in my office all the time, just, yes. you know, at the, trying to solve, you know, to, to save the world, but in just one corner, you know? Yeah. Yes, sometimes, I, I mean, and this is like an imposter syndrome for HR. Sometimes mm -hmm. we think we don't value ourselves, and that's why it's an empower, believe in yourself. We are, we are people, and the company needs us, and we need to believe and believe it you know to, to to acknowledge it and be proud of it not yeah. a shame of it i think we're afraid that if we turn differently that we're going to lose being nice and lose empathy in the organization instead of saying because i bring empathy to the organization that's why i'm valuable because i bring the soft side to you and make it uh, you know important every day to have that as part of your culture something that drives us forward be people first all the time not just during a crisis you go, oh gosh, well, who does that? Well, we do. That's, man, that's power. That's good. That's a, and a healthy power. It's a good thing to say, I bring this every it's day. It's a good power. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I bring this every day to make us better as a company. Yes, and it's it's hard. I mean, people sometimes, for example, well, maybe you will say that that happens to to, to to some of your colleagues or to you too in, in, this, in the States. But um, we call it human. Uh, sometimes we've been called human recursos inhumanos. How do you say inhumanos in English? Unhuman? Non-human non -human resources? Oh, nice. <laughs> recursos inhumanos. Like, oh, uh, recursos humanos is calling you. And everyone, oh my God, maybe I'm going to get a memo. I'm going to get something else. You know, it's like bad news coming. You know, sure, when sure. I'm like, why? Can you just come here and maybe I just want to talk to you? Why do you have to put a negative sign on it? Right. You know, it's like, go to human resources. I'm like, you know, people are afraid and they have like a negative per per perception from us. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of that is earned. A lot of that has been historically totally. earned. Totally. We go, it's a passive we that we're holding back. Yes. So we say, hey, you know, so uh, one of my favorite things is this. I'm a big toy person. I have toys all over my office. Uh, Magic 8-Ball. So uh, if somebody comes up and is negative, I saw that Tati uh, just sent a so let me use Tatiana this. from Chile. Tat Tatiana, just say, so Tatiana, are you going to keep your job? Doesn't look good. <laughs> and, then, and then people laugh. We don't bring the joy to organizations in HR, and we should. And I'm not talking about fun and social. I'm talking about joy, uh, humanity, uh, emotion. It's all there. If we bring that to the company, then we'll eliminate this bad news bears type of person. Uh, we do have to handle the hard things, but that should be the exception and not the rule. Exactly. I like it. Very nice. Um, and it, it is sometimes very hard. And the other thing is that whenever it happens, and please tell me if that happens to, to, to you or to your, to your, um, with, you had probably heard it from different colleagues that whenever something wrong happens in the company, it's HR's fault. Sure. Like, even if you don't have a parking space or toilet paper in the bathroom, is that right? Absolutely. Is that, does that, okay, okay. Absolutely. Well, I don't, I don't know if I should feel relieved because we're not the only ones. No, <laughs> no, I, I think it's, it's funny. Um, HR is a department that wears many hats, has many different responsibilities, including things they don't know, such as office supplies and stuff in the Miscellaneous. Kitchen. Miscellaneous <laughs> stuff. Uh, Miscellaneous. And, and so whenever I've seen those downfalls, and I have. I'm like, okay, so what can we do to turn this around? 
so that it's not a bad experience for you again. Instead of focusing on what's wrong, which is what we do the majority of the day, and that's how we think we even exist in, to have jobs, instead of saying, this is what's wrong, I did, that's the only reason I come to work, it's, this is what's in front of me, how can I move forward? So if we don't have office supplies, what can we do so that doesn't happen again? Uh, if we have somebody who's upset because something was uh, something was mis mis mistreated, how do we address that, assess it, and move it forward? It's not avoiding the problems. It's handling them from a different lens. Uh, another thing I tell people, this is terrible because I don't know if people is watching. This is a kaleidoscope. And oh, give, okay. And wow, I, I haven't seen that in a while. Oh, my yes. gosh. Okay. And I give, I give kaleidoscopes out to managers to say, I need you to look at people differently. And wow, so, that's so nice. So then they have the kaleidoscope and they go, oh, you know, I'm not supposed to go jump to the negative real quick. I'm going to stop think about it differently and it just takes this behavior over time but i think that way there are ways for hr people to turn that ship so it's not a bunch of negativity yes we can make the changes uh, we need to see it in a different way yeah as you said yes and very more like optimistic way and and laugh about it you know in order not to hurt <laughs> us mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, that is that is so true. Okay. Well, um, I have another question for for you. Um, uh, why is your the main reason or your big why actually that the, the big why what motivates you what fires you up uh, what got you moving uh that now that you're in, oh, well not not now but that you're, that you're in HR. Uh, my big. What is your is big that, why? Mm -hmm. My big why is is simple. Uh, it's funny. Uh, I am probably the most people person you've ever met. And a lot of people say, I'm a people person. And it's not really true. Uh, and that doesn't mean I'm in love with everybody. I, the majority of people are great. I think most people are good. Uh, not everybody. I wish they all were. But my thing is, I really get excited about humans. So when I go meet somebody and they're in accounting, I lose my mind. Like, hey, Amanda, how's it going today? How's accounts payable happening? And she's like, it's going great. We're killing it. I'm like, yeah, it's great. And I move on to the next person. I've always felt there had to be someone who believed in people within organizations and within the profession. I'm not trying to self-proclaim that. But someone had to step in the gap and say, I really believe in you. And I know that what you do matters. Uh, I have people now, Angie, that write me all over the uh, world who say, hey, I'm really struggling with this. Do you have five minutes? And I'll make five minutes for them. And I have no idea who they are or where they're at. <laughs> it's like me. You were like, who's Angie Alvarez? <laughs> but, but, but my thing is, I, I was. I, was I like, know, I know. But I went, <laughs> I'm excited. I, it, Machu Picchu. It, 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 it genuinely gets me excited because... People have been aching for someone to believe in them. And um, that drives me. I, I, I love learning about people. I love learning how diverse they are. I love hearing their interests. Not that they have to be my interests, but to have somebody go, you know, I really enjoy this. Tell me more about that. Uh, uh, I'm, if you can see behind me, I have lava lamps all over. And somebody goes, well, I don't like lava lamps. Cool. Then what do you like? You know, just somebody who gives them that moment of time, it breaks through the noise of all of the junk in life and um, gives somebody some hope. Yes. Uh, but I, there's a tricky side of it. I mean, I, 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 I try to ask also my team, what do you like to do? But sometimes, I don't know if it's culture, but sometimes it's, how can we give them um how can they learn to be more accountable and and to have this ownership regarding their role? I mean, it's new. I mean, sometimes we must have the, the, the manager or the boss, you know, right there sitting in front of them, and that's where they work. Sure. And that's, I don't know if it's cultural, but, and that happened to me too uh, when I, I used to have a boss. But now it's like different. I don't know. It's hard to let go because you need to everyone could be happy and everything it's you know they they feel good at the company but they might not get results so how do you mix that how, what's your I, I think again there's a couple things one is set expectations not hold accountable we'll get to that setting expectations okay. is this so let's say you and i work together and uh you happen to work for me 
I go, Angie, here are the expectations I have of you in your role. But my expectations are like this wide. So you perform inside there instead of constrain. A lot of people go, do the following things. Come up with five goals. Hit the following marks. Hit the following deadlines. My thing is, here's all the tools you have. Do you have what you need? Here's the results I want to get. Can you follow those expectations? But I ask you, and I get your buy-in on it. And then the other piece, which no company does, ours is starting to, is this. What are your expectations of me as your boss? It's usually top down. Do, do, do. Right. Usually. I, mm-hmm. I, I, know, I give you tasks. You get it Micromanagement. Done. Mm-hmm. Instead, instead of saying, hey, Angie, what do you need from me? And then understand, I can do this part. This part, I, I mean, I appreciate it, but I can't. And I'll give you a great idea is uh, flexibility. Before remote work and all this kind of stuff, I have a staff of three. They all at different stages of life. Uh, all women, they all have children at different stages of life and not one of them works the same schedule. And I don't have a policy about schedules. I don't have an expectation of when you show up and when you go home. My expectation is do your job well and I'll make sure. Now, if you don't, I'll know because I'll either hear or I'll see, but you, anybody can be flexible. So another department comes to me and says, well, that's not fair. I go, you can do it. Do it with your department. But my department is going to be for my department, your department, for your department, and leave it alone. Where people miss the opportunities to really thrive in organizations is we don't treat people as individuals. We teach them as a collective. So there's uh, you must show up at 8 and work till 5 and be on Zoom for 8 hours. If I hear a child, ah, all these rules, 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 rules. Instead of saying, I need you to do your job. What schedule works best for you? And how can you do this? And this happens whether it's a white collar job, a manufacturing job, an office job, a uh, restaurant job. You can do this, but you have to treat people for people. Understanding if you do individual HR, the whole will work. But most people are afraid to do it. And they do the whole only. Mm-hmm. So it's not so about just true. being positive. You know, it, it's uh, not. Yes. You know. But uh, and what if they don't? I mean, obviously your 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 team it's doing a great job and everything i have to admit so uh once i said uh, i don't know what i'm doing wrong as a leader <laughs> i don't know i mean <laughs> I, I, i'm asking you i mean i'm i i, I sent a voice message actually because I, i ended up frustrated i mean i'm like giving you all this you know everything you're supposed to do and 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 i need to be there i mean i don't like to be a bzz, Uh, a zancudo or a mosquito in your in your ear, you know. But I think sometimes I don't know if they, they we're used to work in a different way, and now when a disruptive leader like you, right, comes into place, they want it, but it's hard to change or to adapt to this new way of of letting go and empower people. Sure, it is. And and b- before you before you 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 continue with it. I'm trying to do what I was, uh, what what my boss when I was 18 did to me. The GM of the of the hotel that I worked for in Orlando, Florida. Yeah. He was very, 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 very nice, very human. He believed in this, as I said, Peruvian, uh, immigrant Peruvian. He empowered me. He didn't. Uh, I uh, he didn't mind that I didn't. Uh, I wasn't studying at college. He saw me, up, you know, there mm-hmm. working. And uh, and I said, okay, wow. <laughs> you, know, you know, when usually you go to a different country to leave, you probably think that you will pay the price to, and then, you know, succeed. But it's about whoever, I mean, I got the chance. I mean, I got the fortune that he was my leader and I learned so much from him. So in my case right now for my team, I don't, it's not like I really care or not, but I don't mind if they have a degree or not. I care about what they're, what they want to do, what they want to impact. Mm-hmm. And, but it's hard. It's hard to, to, to get this. I, I don't know if, if, because I did enjoy what this, my ex boss gave me when I was very young. I want to do the same with my, my, my team. And I don't know if I'm, If it's going to work, you know? Oh, it, it, yeah, I, I think it will. 
and, and this is why. <laughs> Um, this, this sounds like a therapy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> thank I, you for your. I, I'm, I, I'm. You're my consultant or my coach, and yeah. I'm, well, <laughs> let me give you an example of my team. Uh, Julie has been with us 27 years, and so she's been here longer than I have. So uh, <laughs> she is a very organized, production-oriented person. So for her, her day needs to be: I get these things done. I am more conceptual and conversational and move pieces around and do like that. So I have to understand how, what her strengths are and build her up based on her strengths and value her that she's my producer. Because when she does that, we succeed. When she says, well, why aren't you producing the way I am? That's where I make the difference. It's not comparative. We make it way too comparative. Your style is th uh, this for Steve. And Steve goes, well, you don't do that for, and you know, I don't. I do this for you because you and I are met like this. Rebecca and I are met like this. Sean and I are met like this. It's harder and takes more effort, but it works because it allows people to work from where they're good instead of focusing on what they're not good at. You can't keep fixing on what you're not good at. Uh, my office is a bombshell. If I could show you the the uh, screen. I'm just, I'm not an organized person, but it's how I think too. And there are people who go, I could never do this. I go, I know. Isn't that cool? High five. You? Chocatela. Me too. Chocatela. <laughs> High five. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> we've spent so many years trying to force people into boxes instead of allowing them to thrive in how they naturally will do it and trust that they will do their best. And when they don't and when they fail, accountability is much different to me than others. I wanted to make sure to get back to that. Accountability is this. I said I'll do this. I did it. And I might have had 70 reasons why it didn't happen. Okay, well then what can we learn from that so the next time we do this better? Over time, if you can't keep meeting my expectations, then we'll have to address it. And it could get negative and it could affect your job. But that's not the expectation. When you come in into it, it's rules and rules and rules and do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts, I'm going to hit the don'ts 90% of the time because I don't know your style, your approach, your strengths. We're not supposed to make uh, cop carbon copies of us. We're supposed to let people build their own piece of artwork. Let them be who they are, and they'll, they'll go crazy. They'll perform like mad for you. Interesting. And, and my case, it's the case of all HR leaders, I mean, obviously not really exactly the same case, but what I'm trying to say is that if we need to uh, give value to our employees and our companies, we need to have a great team with us. Absolutely. So if we want to make a difference and we want to be like very, you know, in the same mode and everything goes according or even better than our expectations, We need to make sure that we acknowledge what, what you said, that we're all different, that we need to ask, we need to not just keep it to ourselves because it's like, my precious, this is so secret. We cannot yeah. just, you know, because it's it's private. You know, if if you, and that's that's something, for example, in my case, it's a, it's, a, it's my business, it's a, it's, a, it's a different thing. I'm pretty sure big problems come from different companies. But It's about people. I mean, the common uh, uh, factor here is, uh, are that we work with people, and if we wanna, I guess, if we wanna like make the difference in, in our in our companies and in impact lives in, in for our employees, we need to make sure we have the great, great, great team. As you said, you have your three people who are just amazing, and you acknowledge who you are, mm -hmm. and then acknowledge how they are too. Right. So then, uh, mm -hmm. another another tool to give our listeners, uh, which is odd because I'm not sure that there are, is uh, yes, oh. they are. They're very come on. And the good <laughs> thing is that uh, well, that the thing is that uh, my HR professionals in in Latam sometimes are like very they like to listen oh, or they great. just. Yeah, no, but the thing is that they need to interact. They need to network. I mean, we can, we yeah. need to break the digital boundaries oh, I, here and say. <laughs> I, I can, I, we, we will, before we end, I'll give you a way to do that in a very natural and healthy way. Let, the, let, me, right. ask, answer, let me answer Tatiana's question along with this. What are the most common mistakes we make as HR leaders at companies? First one is this. 
it's not about senior management, it's us. We should lead from our chair where we are, regardless of title. So when we say, well, I can't because, and senior management, uh, it's like we're subservient, we're not. They're expecting us to come to them, if we're not at that level, to say, here's on the people side of things. And uh, the common mistake is this, we make things about work processes, policies, and procedures, and not about people. But when you listen to conversations at work, within five words or 10 words, you're gonna hear a, a person's name. So uh, the example I give is this, uh, in pizza world, we have pizza with cheese. And if our cheese is not there, um, people go, oh my gosh, you know what's going on? And Steve didn't order the cheese. So you go, wait a minute, is it that we didn't order the cheese or Steve didn't know what to do? It's a people issue. So my thing is take the people side of things, equip them with good processes, you'll get better results. So we keep focusing on processes and results, Tatiana, instead of people plus processes equals results. Um, and this is going to sound awful. That's in my new book. <laughs> Yay! Uh, uh, but uh, on HR we, Rising, right? Yeah, yeah. but we've missed the people side. We should bring the people aspect to the table every time because that's what people are already talking about. Every conversation in your company is about people. It's not about work. It's about the people doing the work. So bring up the people side. Bring it up. Yes, we need to do that. Actually, you know what? Something that I figured out, something like magical happened to me on my early ages. I'm 39, so a few years ago, um, is that I worked for a hotel. Mm -hmm. Like this kind of, uh, I don't know, like customer service, sir, uh, people-oriented person, I guess it... I guess it was like the foundations I needed to, or it helped me to be in HR. Sure, sure. It's it about service. Mm -hmm. It is. And what, what's funny is even if you're in a professional services organization or um, if you're in a uh, manufacturing situation, I've worked in professional services. I worked in consumer goods. I've worked in restaurants and I've worked in manufacturing. So I think I've covered my, the only industry in America that I haven't covered is healthcare. Uh, <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. Every one of them was about the great people who did the job, who made the parts for our machines, who uh, packed the parts in the boxes that went to people. It, it's mm -hmm. still, it, it's not, we keep making it about human resources instead of out of mm -hmm. humans. Uh, we, we need to be a human ourselves. So uh, what's funny, I mean, our, our call is exactly right. Gee, I had some tech problems. Don't lose your mind, go, I have tech problems. Okay, cool. Uh, we had a time zone issue. And for those of you listening, I had the time wrong and I felt horrible. But Angie, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. but, but Angie switched things and was able to adapt. Uh, back to Tatiana's question. The other piece that's missing, missing in HR, is we hold on to old uh, practices and systems instead of being adaptable and agile. People are unpredictable. People are messy. People are all kinds of things. But what we forget is we're people too. So everything we project on others is actually us. And if we would go, you know, I'm unpredictable. I'm messy. I'm not this, but I'm great at this. I love this. I encourage people. I lift people up. It changes you. And it changes how you do HR. It moves people. It awakes people. Sometimes I think that um, now that people, like with a grand resignation all over the place, right? All over the world, actually, not only in the US, but people are saying, I want to live my life the way I want it to. It's not, yes. a, you know, and, and they're making big choices and right. they're willing to take risks. And that's great. You know, I think it's great. However, for HR, it's not, you know, but it's a way for us to think disruptively or to think outside the box. And not only get, uh, because what I've seen is that they're paying more to get people work, mm -hmm. but it's not going to fix the main problem, which I think people want time with their family for their own, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I, I think, let, let me leave you with one thing, and then I'll tell people how we can connect, and you better connect. But if you connect with me, I'm going to give you the example that Angie did, because Angie went so far out of the box to connect with me on LinkedIn, some random person on LinkedIn, and now I'm able to talk to you around the world. I mean, it's really, it's phenomenal. 
It is this. Thank you. This is how people look at people. They see the outside. They see the outside only. I have three people on my team, Angie, and they're, my team is this, but I really don't know anything about them. And what they're asking for in HR is to do this, my favorite toy. Unlock the light that's inside them. <gasps> wow. Okay? So, <laughs> so, in, so HR, this is what HR should do. You should quit doing this and just focusing on the outside and all the problems and all the stuff and... If you open them up on the inside, then you'll see the great people that they already have been that want to work for your organization. So you need to unlock the light that's inside every person, and you can do it. Unleash, like Tony yeah. Robbins says, unleash, unlock so. the power. Very nice. Wow, I want all those, those <laughs> elements that you have in your office. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Wow. That's an ama oh my god. It's so inspiring. I mean, come in. I mean, come on. I, I guess we have less people connect because we we connected because we change our time. But I will make sure everyone watches this for at least in my community. But it's very powerful. It's very human what we're saying, and and it's like we've met probably. I know you forever, Steve. I don't know if you oh. have the same feeling. <laughs> I do. I do. We've been talking <laughs> online. I'm like, I I need to know her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I would ask people, um, feel free to connect with me. I am very intentional. But understand, if we connect, we connect. So don't just connect to say, I was told to. Connect because you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, because as peers in this great profession, we can have an HR community that's truly global. And it's something I've been working on for decades, to be honest, before the internet was around. Uh, so if you connect with me on LinkedIn, please do. Um, it, I'll answer your question here, Maria, in just a second. And then, um, or Twitter, I'm a huge person on Twitter. Um, Angie has my contact information. I'm you, you connect with me and I promise you, I will be there as a resource for you. Uh, yes, Maria Alejandra, oh. Maria Alejandra, she's from Peru, but she moved to Canada probably about six, seven months ago. So she's, you know, firing up and learning English. So I'm pretty sure it took her a while to type these words. So. Please read it on your own. Read it for her. Guys, I love it. Uh, COVID has shown us that we need to change, adapt, and change the way we view our workers and our HR teams. We need to acknowledge our own light. You are spot on, Maria. Spot on. That is absolutely true. Very good, Maria. Maria Alejandra. Mariale, actually. Oh, Maria Alejandra. Alejandra. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's amazing. And regarding... Um, we have, well, we have a little bit more time here. Regarding the second book, The HR Rising, so what um, motivated you to to switch? I mean, to, to build, to, to, to create this other masterpiece from HR on Purpose to HR Rising. And I just uh, shared the link also for from Amazon so you can uh, get a Kindle version or send it to your country <laughs> whatever works better for you i'm reading kindle so because it will take forever to come here not forever but it'll take a while yeah. uh, anyway what, mo what motivated me um mm -hmm. i am very fortunate in that hr on purpose really had a global reach uh, i have examples of people who've read it from pakistan to uh peru to australia to the states to canada i was just, i'm floored floored by this uh, I got a note from a young uh, person just starting HR in Ghana and said, I found your book and, and it said, I, I want to, this is how I want to do HR. So it, I just felt that I had hit a, a note to people and I was talking to Matt, my publisher at Sherm, and he says, Hey, do you think you have another one in you? And I said, yeah, I think I do. I, you know, it's been a couple of years. There's more to say, but what I wanted to write about was how you can be a leader from where you are. That's not new. I'm not, you know, oh, it's an, a brand new concept. But HR people don't lead. We, we act as a support function. I'll, when, um, the rule I use, Angie, is this. If you have to go to HR, it means you're not inside the organization. Oh. HR should go to you. HR should be in front of you, virtually, in person. However, HR should lead out to people uh, oh. in, in every department. So in this one, the contrary when I told you the first one took a year and a half to write, this mm -hmm. one took a, this one took a month and a half to write. Um, and it, I just felt really compelled to put this together. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And uh, I've heard good things so far. It came out during a difficult time, but it talked about uh, the value of being a people first organization before the pandemic hit. So this had, I had no idea, none of us had an idea what this was going to happen. I think it's very timely. It's encouraging. Uh, it's a, another bunch of stories, like the first one. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> uh, but I think there's uh, ways you can make it applicable from where you are. Very nice. And actually, you know what? The things that, that I will think that make it applicable as a human being <laughs> is your, your comments, your phrases, your your quotes, you know, mm -hmm. they're very inspirational. I mean, I really appreciate uh, your words. I'm I'm looking at you like this, like I'm in love with you, you know. Oh, he's so nice. <laughs> he inspires me. But you do. You do. You do. And that's, that's, uh, and when I saw different webinars, different videos from you, I said, he has the magic. He has what I need. He has the, the power to power of people because sometimes i feel like we're at the walking dead series we're walking like this no mm -hmm. reason no no north and we need to wake up we need to 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 lift ourselves up and, and say okay i'm in hr for a reason i'm here to try i'm here to make the difference i know it might uh, it might not be perfect i know it might cry i might get upset i might get you know laughs and i will be probably happy too but, but it's it's about enjoying the ride not just, you know, as you said, processes and being the right. bad boy, bad girl, right? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, okay. And we have a last question here or comment. Tips for transitioning from Valerie Hebert Park Hill. Uh, tips for transitioning into that leader role when you are grown with the same company over 10 years. Valerie, great question. I'll give you my personal example. When I came to La Rosa's, I've been here 15 years now. This year, I came in as I came in as the director of HR. Over that time, I was director of HR, executive director of HR, VP of HR, chief people officer. Okay, we don't have a formal program to move ahead. I was recognized by our leaders because of the behaviors I showed in my job, and how we took the human side of the business and made it valuable, and not. I don't fall into the trap of. <laughs> We're, we're overhead. I understand we're overhead. I don't fall into the trap of we're a cost center. Yes, we are a cost center. I, I don't fall into the traditional traps. I make new paths on my own and with my team and for others. As I lift the organization up, which is my job, by the way, my job is to make La Rosa succeed. It's not to be a good HR person. And that's the job for everybody. If you can show through your efforts what you do, companies will recognize you. Now, I know that's a little utopian, but if a company doesn't recognize you and you know you're bringing that value, then that's a good reason to find another company. And I, I don't I, I want people to constantly change jobs. This is the longest I've ever been anywhere in a job. But the way you can be a leader is through your behavior and consistency. And the third part is being authentic. I cry every day with people. I laugh every day with people. I mess with people to have, let them enjoy what they do. I don't come to work to work. I come to work to lift people up. I can't hear you. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's that my, my chihuahua started barking. So I muted it. I'm like, I want to say that that's amazing. Once again, I'm like this, you know, inspired. And that's what we need. We need this space for us to, to remember that we're here for a reason and we need to believe in ourselves and to make difference in our companies, no matter where we are, no matter the size of the company, but we need to kind of um, find a way to do it, right? And lift others, even if, especially for those who, has, um, who have the, the, the role to be HR leaders. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for your comments. I will... As I said, once again, we we got the time zone wrong, but we're <laughs> here. Thank you, Steve, for uh, giving us your time. Please connect with him via LinkedIn. I will, um, let me get your LinkedIn. Uh, I already put the, uh, the the link for Amazon, and then also you can get his, his book, uh, his book, well, books and also his blog actually how often do you write on your blog how often do you update um, it probably once a week oh okay wow okay um, very good hold on let me just get this okay there you are okay let me then 
than that. Do you have any last words to to last last comments or final message to share with us before we end this session? Yes, I would say this. Understand that I'm a peer. I'm a, pra I'm a practitioner just like you. Whatever phase of HR you are. So I'm not someone who's just coming up with a bunch of theories and stuff. I practice this every day. And I know you can do it. And I know that you can make it your style, your strength, and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, I believe in what you do because it's what I do. And I think that, you know, HR has nothing but value to add to companies. And you need to know that someone's out there who uh, appreciates working with people, appreciates how hard it is, appreciates the challenges, but knows that the opportunities far outweigh the challenges that are in front of you. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone. And as I said, I will pass on uh, my video to the video to everyone. I'm so sorry. I guess she wants some attention too. Or either my Chihuahua wants Taco Bell. I guess that's what it is. Um, uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time, Steve. Um, I know you need to go to another meeting. Uh, there's Sonia also saying thank you. Thank you for inspiring us, inspiring me. This uh, this was a gift and a, uh, a very nice session for, for me too. Um, thank you and let's connect. So you, hear, you have here Steve as a peer, a uh, one-to-one -one peer. So that's the magic of, of that technology and internet. No boundaries. That's right. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.